Hello, everyone. Welcome to tutorial number three. This tutorial video caps off week four, which means that you're done a month of university now. Congratulations for making it this far. First year is never easy, and it is not made any easier on this online format. I hope that you've been having a phenomenal week so far, and hopefully you've been able to get a bit of a break, relax a little bit after completing assignment number three. So today, we're going to be talking about some common errors that we have been seeing in Piazza on the assignments and on in office hours. And we're also going to be talking about binary search trees, which is kind of the big theme for week four. The first one is a memory error. You will see this text or something very much like it in Marmoset if one appears. The two most common causes are infinite recursion or an inefficient recursion or an inefficient program. So what the memory error means is that when we talk about size and time complexity, this means that your space complexity is too large to fit. So when you call sum two of 10 million, it builds up an addition that is too big to store in the limited memory of the beginning student language of Marmoset. Similarly, if you build an infinite recursion, it will generate an expression that is too large to hold in memory. If you build an infinite recursion and it is tail recursive and it doesn't increase in memory, it will exceed the CPU limit instead. And you'll get a, a similar error that says CPU limit exceeded. The next one is node left or node right, calling this uh, expects a given node. I expects a node given something else. So what this means is that you have called node left or node right on something that is not a node almost always, maybe not almost always, but oftentimes it is empty. So this can be fixed by having a different base case. Usually you'll want to check if your tree is empty before you try to investigate any of its subtrees. Because if you ask about a subtree of something that doesn't have a subtree, Racket won't know what to do, so it'll throw this error. For example, the empty tree doesn't have any subtrees. The last error is Function expects only one argument, but found two. And this is when you're passing something into the function that it doesn't expect. Suppose we made our tail recursive sum two with sum between, and you passed in to sum between n, because you're so used to passing n into sum two. The problem there is that it expects three parameters, not just one. So you need to pass n, but you also need to pass one, so one, n, and then zero as an accumulator. And you'll see this is often when someone has changed the contract of their function. So they've changed something that used to only take in one parameter to maybe something Taylor recursive with an accumulator that now takes two parameters, and they haven't updated it in their function. This can also happen the other way, where something might expect three parameters, but you, you'll only have given it two. And you want to be really careful when you change what kind of information your program accepts. Another common thing is how do I know if I'm calling make node too many times? For example, in the problems where you were asked to write tree grow min and tree shrink min. The most common solution is that you ask Marmoset, and I've scratched it out because this is not a very good solution because Marmoset will grade you, it'll tell you that your program is incorrect, and it'll give you a long result, and the student will look at the wrong result and say, does this mean I'm running out of uh, memory? Or does this mean that I am using too many make node calls? Or does this mean that I'm simply returning the wrong trees? And Marmoset doesn't tell you why you're wrong. It just tells you that you are wrong. So a better way is to think about the difference between make node representing data and make node being used as a constructor. So if you call make node on two new things, that's using make node as a constructor and it counts as one call. If you are using something else that is already constructed, like you have a tree and it is make node empty empty, if you use that tree for something, it does not call make node. The second way is to understand your program. So if you write a program that only has one make node call per height, in that case, you know that you shouldn't be exceeding the number of make node calls. And if you are, it means that your program is incorrect somewhere. So when we've, if you've written, for example, tree shrink min by counting the size of the tree and then calling tree grow min of 
the one less the size. If you understand how your true grow min works, you'll see that you're actually calling the constructor once per every node, unless you've done something crafty. The next thing is to work through your program on small inputs. And this is like stepping through examples that have say four nodes or fewer. The last one is to discuss with an ISA. If you're really stuck, Rivers and I will be very happy to talk to you. We're very responsive during the normal day working hours. We're not as responsive outside of the normal day working hours. So if you call us at night or on the weekends, we might not get back to you. But during the daytime on the weekdays, uh, we should be able to help you out there. And we will be happy to. The next one is binary search tree. So this whole slide is kind of talking about the definition. So here it is. A binary search tree is either empty or a node decorated with an element whose left subtree is also a binary search tree with elements less than E, which is the element of your node. And the right subtree is a BST with only elements greater than E. So that is a really confusing sentence. And a way to make sense of it is that it's just a regular binary tree, your good old binary trees, but all the keys on the left, they're decorated with numbers. All the keys on the left are smaller than your node. All the keys on the right are larger than your node. In Racket, one possible implementation is to make a struct with three fields and name the struct something useful and also name its fields something useful that you can get the information out of. So left subtree, right subtree, and key of your node. Here are some examples of BSTs, um, height two BST with three nodes, an empty BST and a height three BST with four nodes. And I uh, put in the empty tree here so that you can see the make node calls more clearly. These are some non-examples. These two are not BSTs. This guy, you'll see he has four as a repeat. And the problem with that is that it breaks the invariant because four is not less than four. In this definition, when we say less than or greater than, we mean strictly less than or strictly greater than. This tree right here has a 20 on the right subtree of 23, a node with 23. And that breaks the invariant property because 20 is less than 23 and not greater than 23. We can modify the implementation of the BST to make certain algorithms and operations run faster. It's really useful to understand these two modifications in particular, one where you decorate the tree with the key, but also the size. So you'll see something very similar to this in a 4A, I believe, where you're asked to grow and shrink trees, but you get to access the size in constant time. Another popular modification is to decorate the tree with a key as well as a height. So if you are doing something that is very intensive on calls to height, you'll be able to call height in constant time. As an alternative op option, you can decorate it with both the size and the height if you think that you will be calling both size and height frequently enough to merit including that as a parameter. You might think that this changes the definition of BST, but from an uh, abstract data type standpoint, these two definitions satisfy our original definition of BST because this definition doesn't care how it's implemented. We're just giving an implementation that will be able to run things a little bit faster. So lastly, I'm going to kind of mirror the style that Professor Cormack has presented, uh, del b, the delete function for BST and insert BST um, in this week's lecture with another function called match BST. What match BST does is that it takes two BSTs as input and it will output a number and that number is going to be the number of items that match. So the number of keys that are common to both BSTs. So if your BST has one, two, three, four, and five, and you want to match it with a BST that has four, five, six, and seven, you'll match four and five and output two. So you're going to compare the numbers to see which ones are the same. So here are the cases and here are the results. If either BST is empty, BST one is empty or BST two is empty, you produce zero because there's no elements there. In the case that they're both non-empty, we can write them out in this format with the key X and the key Y and then left and right subtrees AB, left and right subtrees CD. In this case, you wanna compare X and Y and you're gonna decide what to do next based on that comparison. 
So if X and Y are the same thing, we found a match and you need to keep going. You need to see, you need to add that to some kind of tally, most likely an accumulator, and then you need to keep looking for more matches. If X is less than Y, we check if X is in C and if Y is in B. And the reason for that is because if X is less than Y, and we want to check if X is in this whole tree, we no longer need to check D, subtree D, because of the invariant property. We know that if X is in this tree, it can't possibly be in the right subtree because everything here is greater than Y. And if Y is greater than X, all the things in D will definitely not be X. So we only have to check C. For a very similar reason, we only need to check B because Y could not possibly be an A because of our invariant property. A is all, all the things in A are smaller than X. For the reverse inequality, the last case, X greater than Y, we need to check the opposite trees. So X can only now be in D and Y can only now be in A. To end it off, as always, I've got some problems for you. I hope that you enjoy them. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.